In this video, I'll remove the AC controls panel and these other trim panels on a 2014 Corolla. I'll start by disconnecting the negative battery cable for safety and I'll wait 5 minutes for the airbag capacitor to fully drain. Now I'll remove the cover on the right side of the dashboard and I'm using a trim removal tool which is great for reaching underneath trim without scratching it. I'll have a link to one in the video description. And once the clips are disengaged, it can be pulled right out. Next I'll disengage the clips at the end of the radio trim. And I'll work my way towards the radio now, carefully prying on the top while pulling on the bottom at the same time. The top clips can be tricky to disengage and they are fragile so a lot of care has to be taken to avoid breaking them. And once it's removed, it's important not to pull it out too far since there are two connections at the back. To disconnect the hazard lights button, I'll press the release tab and pull it out. And the other connector is for the airbag light, which can trigger an airbag warning light if it's disconnected. So instead of disconnecting it, I'll remove the module by carefully prying on the top edge to disengage it, making sure not to pry out too far to avoid breaking the plastic. Next, I'll remove the trim around the steering wheel, starting with the left dashboard cover, which comes out similarly to the one on the right side. Now I'll remove the small trim above the vent, And here's the view from the back. The clip on the left can break easily, so it's important to pull it out gently. Now to remove the vent cover, I'll disengage the two clips on the top first. Now disengage the bottom left. And I'll pry on the bottom to remove the cover. It will usually pop right out, so it's important to hold on to it to prevent it from falling on the ground. Now to remove the instrument cluster cover, I'll disengage the clip on the left first. Now disengage the right side. And it should come right out. Now there's one more piece to remove here. I'll pry on the right side first to disengage the two right clips. Pry on the bottom to release the bottom left. And finally on the top for the last clip. And here's the view from the back, it has a clip on each corner. Now the hook on the left side of the AC controls panel is free to come out, but the panel is still held in place by the trim below, so let's remove that next. To remove the shifter bezel, I'll pry up on the edge facing the rear of the car, And here's the front of the bezel which has two hooks, so this side should not be pried on. Now to remove the cup holder, I'll pry on the side first, then the front. And work my way towards the back to disengage the clips on each corner. Once it's unclipped, it's important not to pull it out too far because there are two electrical connections underneath. I'm going to leave them connected, and I will turn it slightly to the side, making sure not to pull on the wires. Now to remove the trim in front of the cup holder, I'll lift both sides at the back to disengage the two clips. And there are two more clips at the front, to disengage them, I'll slide my trim tool underneath, and push the panel towards the back. Now the AC controls panel is free to come out, and to remove it, I'll disengage the clip on the top right first. And I'll work my way down towards the bottom right. And I'll do the same on the other side, disengage the top left, and now the bottom left. Once the panel is removed, I'll make sure not to pull it out too far, because there are delicate connections at the back. These two cables are especially fragile, 
and their insulation can break easily if it's twisted or turned too far. If any of the knobs have a problem, they can be removed individually, and each knob will have a clip on the left and right side. Alright, so now we can go ahead and reinstall the panels. Make sure the clips are all lined up first before pressing the panels back down to avoid bending or breaking a clip. This can easily happen to the instrument cluster cover, so it's important that the tabs on the top are lined up as well as the clips on the bottom before re-engaging them. I'll start by lining up the tabs at the top and now the clips on the sides and re-engage them. If the clips don't engage right away, they probably haven't lined up, so it's important not to force them. It's also important to press only on the front part of the trim when pressing it back in and keep fingers away from the edges to avoid being pinched. Now to reinstall the bottom trim, I'll push it forward first and press the corners down. And when installing the cup holder, I'll make sure the leather boot is tucked in and press the corners down. To reinstall the bezel, I'll slide the front part in first and press the back down to snap it in. And to reinstall the radio trim, I'll reconnect the hazard lights button first Push the light module back in, and now I'll line it up, and press it back in gently on the top and bottom, starting on the left, and I'll work my way slowly towards the right. And to reinstall the dash cover, I'll push it back in on an angle and press it down to re-engage the clips. When reconnecting the battery, I'll make sure not to over-tighten the terminal. And give it a tug to make sure it's on tight. If you liked this video, please press the like button and consider subscribing. Your support is really appreciated. Thanks for watching.